Hi, I'm Val Beebe. I'm the host and a visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Welcome back to the Valder Beebe Show. I'm your host, Valder Beebe. My next guest is Dr. Julia Mead. She's an oncologist, pediatric oncologist, and uh, Rainey. Rainey's a caregiver. They're here to talk about NF1. You'll understand what it is. Dr. Mead, thank you for being here, and thank you, Rainey, for joining us. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Dr. You. Mead, I'm going to start off with you. First of all, NF1 is the acronym probably for this uh, diagnosis. Tell me about this NF1 and what's the actual name of it? You bet, Valder. It is actually called neurofibromatosis 1, which, as you can tell, is a bit of a mouthful, so we shorten it to NF1. And it's a relatively common genetic condition that leads to the development of soft little tumors under the skin, or sometimes even larger tumors that are known as plexiform neurofibromas. Who's uh, uh, usually the target of NF1? I'm sorry, you cut out there for a second. Who's usually the one that, that are sufferers of NF1? Is there a particular age group or a particular cultural group? Who, who is the end result of getting NF1? Yeah, thanks for that very thoughtful question. Definitely, we're here with AstraZeneca to present the fact that this is a genetic condition, and so people are born with it, and it's lifelong. It's currently incurable, and we typically start to see symptoms in early childhood, as early as a couple months of age, when a parent might notice that their child has more birthmarks on their skin than you would typically expect. And then as children get older, they develop other symptoms, such as some special eye findings or freckles in the armpits or around the groin area. And sometimes even these plexiform neurofibromas might be the first indicator that somebody has NF1. Tell me, some, uh, th those, are those considered symptoms or just identifiers? I think a little bit of both. Sometimes these plexiform neurofibromas can really cause a lot of problems such as pain or disfigurement. And so in that sense, they are symptoms. Is there also a PN that's uh, associated with NF1? That's right. So these larger tumors called plexiform neurofibromas, we often shorten that to PN because it's also a pretty wordy phrase. Yes, they are. I'm going to switch to Rainy just a moment. Rainy, you're a caregiver. Can you give us a synopsis of your connection with uh, NF1? Sure. Our son was five years old in 2011, and we were at the beach. And we noticed, like what Dr. Mead said, sort of a lump under the skin. We went to his pediatrician for his annual checkup. They treated it with antibiotics, thinking it was just a, a, a regular childhood infection. And when that growth area didn't go down with regular antibiotics, we were sent to a pediatric surgeon for a surgical biopsy. And unfortunately, that surgical biopsy revealed that he did indeed have a plexiform or a PN tumor. And that was how he was diagnosed. So at age six, his plexiform neurofibroma involved his airway and his carotid arteries. It was really in a critical place for a boy that was continuing to grow developmentally. How old is your son now and how's he doing? So our son is now 15, and while that was a very dark and scary time for our family when he was six at that first diagnosis, at first we didn't really have a lot of hope. We didn't really know what the word neurofibromatosis meant, um, but very quickly we were able to connect with our medical care team that offered us a lot of hope and kind of set a plan for his life since this is an incurable genetic disorder. So now that he's 15, he is in a much better place. He's had significant clinical improvement due to the treatment plan that was put into place. He does not have the disfigurement that Dr. Mead spoke of, which is really important for somebody who's just now starting high school. So we're in a very, very hopeful place. Thank you for asking. And thanks for sharing. I really appreciate it. Dr. Mead, is Rainey's story unique or different or par for the course? Every child with NF has their own story, but I will say that I take care of many children who have stories similar to Rainey's son. And it's really important for families to feel like they can connect with a medical team that really understands their child's condition, which is why we recommend, especially now with COVID going on, working with your care team and finding an established NF center to be able to really understand your treatment team and your treatment options nowadays. 
as we trudge through COVID trying to find an answer or a way to live with this, what is your recommendation for people who may be thinking, listening to this uh, broadcast, thinking, I need to get this checked out. I, I, I don't know if, if this is what my child has. What is their next step? Absolutely. So there is a helpful website called nf1andpninfo.com, and that's a great starting place. If you're already connected with a medical center, you can ask your PCP or pediatrician who they would recommend who knows NF well. And nowadays there is also such an increase in telemedicine that sometimes families don't need to travel in order to reach out to an expert or a specialist. Dr. Julia Mead, I really appreciate you and Rainey talking about this and enlightening me and my audience. You just have a great holiday. Thank you both. Thank you so much Thank for you. having great us and for your advocacy. Too. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.